Okay, hey there, Facebook meteorologist Wesley Williams here. Uh, very, very quick update this morning on Hurricane Maria, which continues to get even stronger as expected. We still expect Maria to intensify even more uh, in the coming days as it bears down on the poor, poor Caribbean islands there. And those same islands saw a major Hurricane Irma slammed them in recent weeks and some of those islands even saw impacts from major hurricane jose as well so we'll get things started here and kind of show you the latest stats you can see on the screen there as of 7 a.m hurricane maria intensified to a category 2 hurricane there with maximum winds of 110 miles per hour and you can see that the system continues to move off to the west-northwest at 12 miles per hour uh, and the pressure has come down. If you're kind of new to tracking hurricanes, this number, the pressure, the lower it is, the stronger the storm system. So, uh, and usually the lower this pressure number, the higher the winds. So the lower this number goes, it pretty much is a direct correlation in how much the wind is increasing there. Uh, and good morning, Alice. Good morning, Steve. Good morning, Jesse. Uh, let's take a quick look at the forecast cone with Hurricane Maria. And uh, again, you can see that it's going to be... Oh, no, I want the hurricane cone. Let's uh, throw that on here first before we do the models. All right, so here's a look at the forecast, the official, the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm so sorry about that, everyone. I have had my mic muted here. Thank you for pointing that out. I've been trying to look at the comments, and I finally see those comments showing up about the no sound. Um, so if you're just joining us, a meteorologist Wesley Williams here. And again, we did have earlier in the video the update on Hurricane Maria, which you didn't hear me say, but I guess you saw the winds at 110 miles per hour minimum pressure 967 and uh, that is why uh, the system has intensified to a category 2 hurricane thank you all for pointing out uh, that the mic was muted earlier I, I do really apologize about that um, but yes unfortunately these same islands that got slammed by hurricane major hurricane Irma and the same islands that got brushed by major hurricane Jose are now dealing with at least a third threat here with uh, Hurricane Maria which is expected to reach major hurricane strength. We'll take a look at the models in a moment but first I want to look at the official forecast which you were just seeing right before I unmuted the microphone. Um, you can see that the system does go off to the northwest there uh, continuing to intensify in a category four strength so again all of those islands Puerto Rico uh, the island of Hispaniola which includes the countries of Dominican Republic and Haiti British Virgin Islands US Virgin Islands Anguilla St. Kitts Barbuda Antigua uh, Guadalupe all of those areas not looking too good and again they were just raked clean by Irma some of those places so this is definitely not what you want to see. That's the biggest story here. That's the major story. People in the Gulf can worry if they want. People on the U.S. East Coast can worry if they want. But the main story out of Maria is going to be that it is just pummeling the areas that do not need it right there in the Caribbean. Now, we press this out in time, and you can see that uh, by the weekend, major hurricane near the Bahamas. 
Uh, this is the third time we're going to have something like that this season where there's going to be a major hurricane near the Bahamas. So obviously, with a system that close, we're going to be paying close attention. Um, wow, I see Andreas saying he's from Puerto Rico and still has no power service since Irma. So again, this is not good to have this system uh, hitting those same areas like that. Uh, and I know that Jose made a close brush with Puerto Rico as well. So again, not a good story for them. Now again, this is the forecast up until Saturday. This cone, this forecast cone does not go past Saturday. So after five days, you don't really get a reliable forecast. That's, this is kind of the, the peak of our scientific uh, field here and the peak of technology. This is the best we can do is give you this five-day forecast cone. Now, there are computer models that go beyond five days. Those cannot be trusted like you can trust this cone here because those computer models have a higher degree of uncertainty associated with them. Now, we can take a look at some of the computer models past Saturday and see what happens with that. Um, and just keep in mind that the cone, this one right here, this takes the models into account. The majority of the models are going to fall inside of this cone because the humans that create this cone, the human hurricane experts at the National Hurricane Center that draw this cone, they look at the computer models. So those experts are taking those models into consideration. Uh, it just uh, is a lot of times I hear confusion about people saying, well, I saw this model say this. And that's not what the forecast is showing. But just keep in mind, the models are taken into consideration. Okay, so let, that being said, let's press this out into time. And I will give you all a timestamp so that you can keep track along with me. So here's your timestamp, and let's turn it on to day. Uh, date, sure. Let's turn it on to a date. All right. So uh, here we are, Monday, September 18th. Tuesday, September 19th, Thursday, September 21st, Saturday, uh, Saturday, September 23rd. So again, you're looking at the, the cone there, the one that everyone at the National Hurricane Center took their time to draw for our consideration if we are planning on making any kind of disaster decisions. You can see that their cone includes the majority of the models through Saturday morning. Yes, there's a model that comes down here. Yes, there's a few that go over Cuba. But again, the majority of them, that's what we're looking for here. We look at models to look at trends. We don't look at models to look at one specific run. And so as we push this past Saturday to see maybe where the cone is going to go after Saturday, here's Sunday the 24th, and I'm seeing the majority of models indicate this will be the likely extension of the forecast cone. We will likely see Irma, when the next forecast cone comes out, continue that track to the north. So uh, that's important to understand when you're talking about tropical information because there's going to be a lot of misinformation just like there was with Irma. I know a lot of people in the Gulf wanted to worry about Irma um, and we saw that it took the turn. And so again, is it possible that one of these little models over here are correct and that Maria could get into the Gulf? Yes, it's possible. That's why I'm talking about this system and that's why we're continuing to watch it. But I gotta say, it's pretty unlikely because of the, uh, all of these lines right here, all of the computer models are in very good agreement that the system is gonna continue moving off to the north by Sunday. Let's press these models on to Monday, September 25th. Okay, now we're getting a higher degree of uncertainty. Look at the, the spread on these models. Even if I draw a circle to where most of them are clustered, I'm going to get a cone that looks something like this. So that's a pretty huge area of uncertainty, and I think I can probably slide that over just to the west just a tad. Uh, but again, the majority of them east of Florida, the majority of the models, mainly outside of the Gulf. And they keep going, and again, the majority of the models do continue that sort of northeastish turn there. So I think in general, if you follow the majority of the model lines, you get kind of a track like that. Um, 
But again, we, we cannot rule out Gulf impacts. We cannot just wipe our hands clean here and say, okay, well, the models uh, are just a few of them here. It's okay. The most of them are over here, so we're good. Uh, this is why we will continue watching Irma until this weekend and maybe beyond because, again, the official forecast for Irma, or excuse me, Maria, sorry, we will continue watching Maria until this weekend because the official forecast for Maria puts the storm center around the Bahamas and we cannot rule out Gulf impacts. So uh, that's why we're going to be watching here. Um, I do mean Maria. Thank you, Ariel. Um, they kind of have very similar names. If you look at the letters in Maria, every letter from Irma is included in the word Maria. Interesting. Maybe that... Maybe that's why I messed up there. Um, now, again, there are other things going on in the tropics. And the good news for the Gulf of Mexico is that they're not going to bother the Gulf of Mexico. Lee is expected to fall apart as a tropical depression. Jose is expected to affect the northeast United States as a hurricane. And again, neither of those have any chance. Uh, they don't even have a 1% chance of coming into the Gulf of Mexico. So... There's not really a need for any concern, but in case you're wondering, the latest on Tropical Depression Lee winds at 35 miles an hour. I actually notice it getting a little intensif intensification there. Let's turn on the visible satellite so we can see what's going on with those clouds. Okay, so it definitely has a little swirl left to it. You can see there as I move the satellite back and forth. Um, maybe we can do the last three hours here. I can definitely see a little bit of a swirl, so still not completely falling apart. But the National Hurricane Center expecting Lee to be a fish storm falling apart out there. And then finally, you've got Hurricane Jose, which doesn't really look like a whole lot here. Um, and we can kind of do the same thing to look at the satellite information there and see what those clouds are doing. Got a nice little swirl there with the Category 1 Hurricane, maximum winds 85. Uh, but it is being sheared a good deal, and so that's why the official forecast for Jose brings it closer to the coast there uh, mid by midweek. But it does weaken the system and actually makes it fall apart by Friday. So uh, if you have any interest in the northeast there, that's what they're looking at. They're going to be dealing with some high surf and uh, some, some waves for sure, but not necessarily some very high wind or rain. Speaking of rain, if you're a South Mississippian like me, um, this is kind of what we have to look forward to this week. Some possible showers each day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, kind of the same thing, pop-up storms each day. Thursday, Friday, the latest information from the models indicating a higher chance of rain due to an upper disturbance nearby. And, oh yeah, by the way, fall starts Friday, so there you go with the official beginning to the fall season taking place this Friday on the autumnal equinox. And um, that is going to not really bring us a change in our weather pattern. I mean, as you can tell, not much of a change happening there uh, with the <laughs> temperature staying in the uh, in the seventy or in the seventies at night and in the um, in the eighties and nineties in the middle of the day. But yeah, for from Monday, we are now five days away from the official start to the fall season. So uh, again, as we look at when we can finally say goodbye to 90 degrees, because I know a lot of people want the temperatures to finally cool off. Um, in Biloxi, we typically have our last 90 degree day of the year somewhere around late September. And if you look at the last several years, that's pretty much exactly what's happened. Though our records, which go all the way back to 1893, indicate that it can wait as late as late October for us to finally be done with 90 degree temperatures in Biloxi. Um, so we'll see what happens, but in general, I would expect us to finally kind of cool off a tad over the next two weeks or so, uh, based off of history. Um, for areas north of I-10 and near I-10, uh, you might wait a little later. Sometimes uh, for your temperatures to cool below 90, it takes until early October. Um, this is the Gulfport Airport site, so uh, that's what we're kind of seeing there. Sharon saying, I read where after 300 years, uh, there's uh, no one left there because there's nothing left to live. 
Uh, yeah, you were probably hearing that about the island of Barbuda because, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, they were raked clean when major Hurricane Irma crossed that area earlier this year. And unfortunately, it looks like uh, they're going to be dealing with yet another hurricane moving right on top of them there with Hurricane Maria, now up to Category 2 strength as of Monday morning as it makes its way off to the northwest. Again, we'll be keeping an eye on Maria, but at this time there certainly is no concern or no direct alarm for the Gulf of Mexico. Last quick peek at that forecast cone as we leave you this Monday. Have a great day, everyone. We had a beautiful sunrise. You can go to my meteorologist, Wesley Williams' Facebook page to check that out, that beautiful sunrise picture over South Mississippi.